Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you this day. I thank you for your for this time that we find ourselves in, in this time of this feast of unleavened bread. And we're in this time you're still bringing up in our lives to be able to show us the leaven that is still maybe there, that is still surfacing in many different ways because you are cleaning up a body. And like you have said, you are raising up a remnant of sons, those that are the sons of Yahuwah, because children are still being tossed about by every wind of doctrine, but sons are those that come into rest. Sons are those that are in the rest where they don't need to continue to strive because they are at rest knowing that they are being led by you. Sons are those that now need to come into a place of where they can just be and allow you to do and use us so that we can be used for the glory and the honor of your name. Where we stop striving to achieve, where you do not want a bunch of children that need to strive to achieve. They just need to be able to surrender And in their surrendering, you do. And that is why Joseph paints us a beautiful picture. A picture of one that has had to just surrender to you. And in that place of surrendering to you, you are able to lead him where he becomes one that is now not just one that is a dreamer of dreams, but one that is an interpreter of dreams. Why? Because he's one that has your spirit. He's one that is filled and moved by you. But yet we will see that in his weakness, and we all have weaknesses in our flesh, and we all many times still want to lean on the arm of the flesh, and at the end of the day, leaning on the arm of the flesh is not going to help us anything. It will just prolong the process. (laughs) And this is what we must understand. The more we surrender, the more we allow you to have your way, the quicker the process, an 11-day journey that was supposed to have taken the Israelites to get them into their promised land, landed up taking them 40 years, and as a matter of fact, the bulk of them did not enter in, except for two of the original, maybe two million or more, that came out of the land of Egypt that actually entered in. Why? Because they continued to want to put their trust in the arm of the flesh. They wanted to continue to gripe, moan and complain about their circumstances and the issues around them as opposed to surrendering themselves and allowing you to be able to have your way in them as you were teaching them, as you were equipping them, as you were teaching them how you wanted to be served and how you wanted to be able to be worshipped. But we seem to have our own ideas on how we are to worship you. And so you put foundations for us in your foundational covenant for us to understand that worship is all about you and got nothing to do with us. It's about how you want to be served. It's about how you want to be able to have us come and serve you, not with our preconceived ideas and not with our own understanding of worship. Worship has everything to do with sacrifice. To worship you is to sacrifice. And we seem to have this idea that worship is just about playing a bit of music and having to sit and sing a few songs to you. And even then, many times, we don't really want to do that because we rather want to do more exciting things. But when it comes to serving you, there's always a sacrifice that needs to be laid down. There's a sacrifice in everything. And so... Abba Father, I just want to thank you because through the life of Joseph, he didn't even have a choice in this matter. He was put himself, he was put in this process. 
And this is what we're going to see tonight. That at the end of the day, you are going to orchestrate everything that needs to come about in order for us to be able to fulfill your plan. And Joseph was just an instrument in your hand. But what a powerful instrument and what a powerful work you can do through an instrument that is surrendered to you. Because at the end of the day, it's all about your people and the greater work that you have to do. But how sad when we've made it all about ourselves. How sad. How sad when we are at the place that it's still about me, myself and I and my kingdom. When at the end of the day, Joseph didn't even have an option in the matter because it was all about your kingdom and what you were going to do. And he had to surrender and allow you to have your way. And he put everything in place the way it had to be. And so, Father, I just want to thank you for this message. I want to thank you for the deep foundational lessons that we are learning through the life of Joseph in order to be able to understand your heart, in order to understand your process, you will have your way despite what we do. Because you have a bigger plan. And so the devil is not in control, and man is not in control, because you are seated on your throne, and you are still in control. And so I praise and I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, that you open up our spiritual ears, that you open up our spiritual eyes, that you open up our heart in order to be able to receive the very oracles that you want to be able to reveal to us in this evening, tied through the scriptures of this account of Joseph that we need to understand, where it can reflect our lives and what lays ahead of us. And so I praise and I thank you, Abba Father, that you alone are the one that is going to speak. And so I praise and I thank you that I surrender this time to you in Yahushua's name. Amen. And so last week we had a look at chapter 39 and we saw Joseph was taken to Mitzrayim and to Potiphar's house, who happened to have been an officer of Pharaoh. And here we read that Abba Yahuwah was with Joseph, and he became a prosperous man, that um, Potiphar became very prosperous. And he was a man that praised Abba, no matter what trials was going to come, he was going to be, he knew that the father was with him. And we see how he is in charge of everything in Potiphar's house. We also saw that, like his father, we saw that even those around him acknowledged that Yahuwah was with him. And he received favor because Abba was with him. So we see that the same blessing that was upon um, the same blessing that was like on Yaakov. When Yaakov was working for Laban, we saw that same blessing on Joseph because as Joseph is there working in Potiphar's house, everyone can see the blessing and the favor that is upon Joseph. And then we, ha we see that um, he was given much authority. All the authority was given to him. All the authority to be able to run the whole of Potiphar's house was given to Joseph. And he was a handsome young man filled with Abba's presence. So you see, many times when we are filled with the presence of the Father, you know, we're always looking for this external beauty. We're always looking for the external beauty, especially women. We look for this external beauty. But we must understand that the beauty that the Father wants us to have is a beauty that is not this external beauty of the things that's externally that brings forth the beauty, but it's the presence of the Father that brings forth a beauty. 
that nothing that you can put on is going to make you beautiful more than the presence of the Father because the presence of the Father is his glory and his glory is the light that shines from your life. And so we have a look and we see that he was very handsome and it says because he was, he was filled with the Father's presence. And we saw that Joseph was to be tempted. So Abba's bride will be tempted. Joseph was going to be tempted. He was going to be tempted by Potiphar's wife. Because why? He is reflecting the Father's glory. He's reflecting who Abba Yahuwah is. And so what happens? When we start to reflect the Father's glory, when we start to walk in the fullness of the Father's will, what do you think the enemy wants to do? The enemy wants to come and trip you up. So that you fall, so that you have shame, so that you can hide, so that you no longer reflect his glory. And so what happens? So we must understand as his bride, we are also going to, have to be tempted. And what is this temptation? It was the temptation of fornication. So you see, the same as there was Israel and Judah. Judah, what did they do? They fornicated with, their, with other lovers. They had this idols, idolatry, other lovers. And so here yeah, we see the temptation on Joseph to come to be able to bring him into fornication. And so when we are walking in that perfect will of the Father, we're walking with the Father, there's the temptations that come to want to be able to take us off the path. And this is the idolatry that comes, the idols that want to come and take that first place that only Abba is supposed to have in our heart because only he is to have first place in your heart. And this is why this, this, this temptation of fornication will come. And so we fornicate with the world. And how Satan has come to Yahushua himself and tempted him in the wilderness after he was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. What happens? He goes into the wilderness and there he's got to find, he's got to face Hasatan. And so we must understand we too are going to be able to um, be tempted in fornication with the world. Are we prepared to give up the lusts of the things of this world? And so we will have to be tested in our walk. The temptations will come. Will we give in to the temptation of the lust of our flesh? Because understand, she must have been a beautiful woman, this Potiphar's wife. And this is a young man. Imagine a young man that is still very set apart to the father that's never had a woman. And this woman throwing herself on him and every day she asked him to lay with her. And so this is what we must understand. The lust of the flesh comes for us to be able to become a harlot bride. The harlot bride is the one given to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the pride of life and the things of this world. And we saw that Joseph had to resist the temptation. The evil now, if we could do, if he could do it, why can we not resist the temptation that comes in our lives? Why are we not in a place of where we can resist? That we have to resist the temptation that will come in order to be able to lead us astray. Because these things are going to come in order to be able to want to lead us astray from the Father's presence. That wants to be able to lead us astray from that place that only he has got center in our lives. But you see, the enemy brings many things to want to lead us astray. And so when we are fully filled with the Ruach, even though we are fully full, filled with the Ruach, still our will must be executed to be able to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross, our stake, and follow Yahushua Messiah. We need to deny ourselves, pick up our stake, and follow Messiah Yahushua. 
In Genesis 39 verses 10, this was not a once-off temptation that we saw. She came day after day. So Joseph was being tested in his flesh every day. And so we must understand that he had to stand for obedience to the Father. He had to stand in being obedient to the Father. And so you must understand that when a leader raises up, a leader is going to be tested. A leader is going to have the temptation. And a leader is going to have to stand strong. There's no leader that is going to raise up that is not going to have to face a temptation, a trial, a persecution, everything of what Joseph's had to go through. Abba wanted to raise up Abba wanted to raise up a people so that they could be strong in him and not stumble and fall in a time of testing and be given to the flesh. And that's what the father is doing now. He's raising up sons. He wants sons that cannot be drawn away by every wind of doctrine, the trickery of man that leads us astray. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, that we are not to be led astray by trickery of man that is going to lead us astray. But we need to come into unity with Messiah, Yahushua, the one who wants to lead us to come into the fullness of that which he reveals to us and that which he shows us. So a leader will then have to face a test in another way. If the devil can't get you in one way, he will try and destroy your reputation. Because why? When he didn't give in to the temptation, what happened? Potiphar's wife took his cloak and then sat and then said, this man has done this and this man has done that. So when the devil cannot get you to fall in the temptation in your flesh, in for you to sin in the flesh, in the lust of the flesh, what will he do? He will come and want to destroy your reputation. And he will raise up people that will start to speak up against you. Even when you are innocent, people will speak up against you and they will start, you know, the Lashonara, where they start to raise up people that will start to speak behind your back to discredit you and to come and destroy your reputation and to destroy that which the Father is raising you up to be so that you can go into that place of hiding. And so there will be many accusations that will raise up against us so that even if you are innocent, you will be accused for things you did not even do, just like Joseph did, because he wants to destroy you. The devil wants to destroy you, just like Yeshua was accused that he cast out demons by the spirit of Beelzebub. So don't for one minute think that you're not going to be accused by those around you. We saw that the enemy will gather stuff on you so that it will look like you are guilty, but it is because you stand for the truth. You see, she took his cloak. She gathered something of him to be able to stand. And so because you stand for the truth, because Joseph stood for the truth and he was right, this is why the devil hates those that stand for truth. And that's why the devil hates us, because we stand for truth. And the more we stand for truth, the more he will want to come up against us. And so we saw that in Genesis 39 verses 20, then you will be ostracized and the people will turn against you and will reject you. And send you out. Because that's what happened to Joseph. He was now ostracized, put in jail. Now he's gone to be put in jail for a crime he did not commit. And he's been ostracized now. And all these people saying, you see, and this is a man that supposedly was serving Yah. But look at what he's done. He serves Yah, but look at what he's done. He's serving the Father, but look. He's this Hebrew. The Hebrew that serves this great I Am. But look and see what he's done. 
And even though he's innocent, people will believe the lies of those that will come around you. They will come and speak in your ear and they will come and speak against you. And this one will speak and that one will speak. And even if it's lies, they will want to discredit you because that's what the enemy does. And so in verse 21, in the midst of this, Abba was with Joseph and he showed him loving commitment to him. So you see, no matter what we go through, he's with us and he will show us loving commitment. And from verses 22 to 23, we see that even in the midst of a difficult situation, Abba gives him favor because now he puts him in this jail, in this prison, and now Joseph enters into the next higher level. <laughs> you see, higher level, new devil. Higher level of equipping demands more surrenderedness of your life. So you see, in the pit, he came from the pit into Potiphar's house. So there he was sold out by his brothers, landed up in Potiphar's house, but yet he's still now, even though he's a slave, he's got much favor, even as a slave. And he's got, he's being blessed and he's, he's earning a salary and he's becoming prosperous. But now there's a higher level of authority that Joseph needs to come into. And because he needs to come into a higher level of authority, there is a, a bigger test that he's going to have to go through. And now the test of the accusation, the test of the ostracizing, the test of those that are ac accusing him of a crime he has not committed, even for him having to stand for the truth of the Father's word. So you see, I need you to understand today, you have to understand that these are the tests that are going to come your way if you are going to be raising up in order to be a leader for the Father. You will have those that will ostracize you and persecute you and speak up against you and bring accusations against you and now he's going to be put in a prison so now he's not as a as a man who's in charge of just a house where he's earning a salary he's now going to have to work and serve without earning anything because he is now in a prison but He's going higher in the authority that the Father is giving him. So you see, the lower you go, the higher you go. The lower you go in the things of the flesh. Because now, because he stood for truth, he's now, what is happening to him? Because he stood for truth, in the eyes of the world, it looks like he's going backwards. But in the eyes of the Father, he's going higher in authority. Because now he's being put in charge of an entire prison and not just Potiphar's house. Now he's put in charge of a prison and he's given more responsibility for Father to be able to equip him for the greater task that was going to be at hand. And so we continue tonight with our story in chapter 40 as we will continue to read as our story unfolds. And after these events, it came to be, it came to be that the cupbearer and the baker of the sovereign of Mitzrayim sinned against their master, the sovereign of Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh was wroth with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the guard. In the prison, the place where Yosef was a prisoner. Now, I need you to understand something because when I was reading this, it came, it, it, it really, it dawned on me that, you know what? Father will orchestrate circumstances around you to be able to bring about his purpose and his plan. Father will orchestrate the things that which to you, to you just might seem like it's nothing. But let me tell you something. It had to be part of Father's plan to allow the baker and the cupbearer in order to be able to be put in the prison for him 
to play out his plan. So I want you to understand today, don't just look at the circumstance where you are, because in the circumstance where you are, you don't know who the Father is about to bring into your life to turn your situation around. Because you might be in this place of where it looks like hopelessness. How am I ever going to get out of here, Father? How am I ever going, how is my situation ever going to be turned around? And in the midst of where you are, it looks like and it's in an impossibility of a situation. But you don't know who's about to be put into your life. You don't know who the Father's about to raise up to come into your life to turn your situation around. Because he just needs the right person to come into your life to turn a situation around. And this is when I was reading this account today that I realized, wow, the devil might plan many things, but the father is still in control. The devil might think that he's in charge of this world, which the whole world is under the sway of the devil. But understand, the father still has the final say in the matter. So don't ever underestimate what father's going to do. And we read in verse 4, And the captain of the guard put Yosef in charge of them. And he served them. So you see, anybody else could have been in charge of them. But who gets put in charge of them? Ordained by the father. He, the, the captain of the guard of the prison puts Joseph in charge of them. And he served them. So they were in confinement for some time. So understand, yes, Joseph now serving these two men who happen to be those that are working directly with the Pharaoh. They were serving the Pharaoh. Then the cupbearer and the baker of the sovereign of Mitzrayim, who were confined in the prison, dreamt a dream. Both of them, each man's dream in one night and each man's dream with its own interpretation. And Joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. Now understand, how observant is this leader? This is a leader leading the people and his concern is not only for himself, but his concern is for those whom he's serving. His concern is for those whom he is going to have to be able to take care of. Understand, why he's just got to feed them, take care of them. Why should he be worried about their spiritual well-being or their physical well-being? He just had to feed them. But now he's looking at their countenance. And he's disturbed because he saw that they are sad. And so you see, a true leader of the Father is not just concerned for himself. A true leader of the Father looks and sees those that Father puts around them to see what is their, how can you help them? What is going on with them? Where are they in their walk? And that is why a leader is there to be able to walk and be concerned for those that are around them. And it says, and you, okay, and then Joseph saw that they were sad, and he asked Pharaoh's officers who were, who were with him in confinement of his master's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, we each have had a dream. We've, we've each have dreamt a dream. And there is no one to interpret it. And Yosef said to them, do you not, do not interpretations belong to Alua? Relate them to me, please. Now that's very important that you understand this. An interpretation of a dream belongs to Yahuwah. And Yahuwah has given people giftings in order to interpret the dreams. Not everybody can have an interpretation. Maybe someone has a dream 
but another one interprets the dream. And this is a gift that has been given. Just like Joseph has been given a gift because at the end of the day, he's a man himself that has been dreaming dreams. And now he's getting He's going to be able to listen to these dreams. And Joseph is going to start operating in a gifting that is going to in turn become the deliverance that was going to be for the people of Yahuwah in the long run. As he starts to be equipped. Because why? He is filled by the spirit of Yahuwah. He's filled with the Ruach HaKodesh of Abba Yahuwah. And because he's filled with the Ruach of Abba Yahuwah, he is able to walk in that gifting. You see, you don't need to strive to walk in a gifting that has been given to you. You just need to learn to flow in that gifting. And that is why I'm saying we don't need to strive with the things of the Father. You need to surrender yourself for the things of the Father, surrender to Him. And then there's no striving in it with you. There's no striving in it for you. You automatically start to walk out the gifting that is already there. It's not like, <laughs> I always stand in awe of these people that need to go into a school of the prophetic school to be able to learn to be a prophet I wonder where the prophetic school was for all the prophets of the Bible. All that happened with um, with uh, um, Elisha is Elijah put his mantle on Elisha and Elisha walked with Elijah. But he didn't have to go to no prophet school. And so many times when people will say to me, what Bible school did you go to? I said, the Bible school of life. Because my life has taught me many lessons, more than any Bible school will teach me, quite honestly. Because throughout my life, I've had to learn to walk with my father. And so I stand in awe many times when I say, I don't understand these things of how these people go into this prophet school to learn to be a prophet. Because at the end of the day, the father is the one who raises up a prophet and he goes into a pit. It's the prophet in the training. And the prophet learns to have to go into the school of training. And he's going to be equipped. And some things he's going to get right. And some things he's going to get wrong. And he's going to bump his head and he's going to speak many things that's going to get him into trouble many times. And then he's going to pick up himself from there and say, okay, that didn't go down very well. And then he learns while he goes along. Because he's one that's being used, molded and shaped in the hand of the Father. Like every other fivefold ministry person. Like every one of us need to be able to learn to be led and guided by him. And he shapes and he molds and he's the one who will teach us and he's the one who will lead us and he's the one who will guide us and he's the one who equips us as we go throughout our life. And some things we get right and some things we get wrong. But that is how we learn. And that is what it means to walk with him. And these are the things that we need to learn. And so Joseph has understood one thing, that interpretation belongs to Yahuwah. So he just needs to ask Yahuwah in order that he be the one that is going to interpret the dream. Relate them to me, please. So the chief cupbearer related his dream to Yosef and said to him, See, in my dream a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. And it was as though it budded in its blossom, shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. And the Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and so I took the grapes and pressed them into the Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in the Pharaoh's hand. And Yosef said to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet, within three days, Pharaoh is going to lift up your head and restore to your place. And you shall put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former ruling when you were his cupbearer. 
And remember, and re you see, this is now the very thing where Joseph goes into flesh. So understand, Joseph has just given him the interpretation of the dream, just said to him, the father is the one who interprets dreams, and now he decides to put in his 10 cents worth. You know how we sometimes, we, we put in our 10 cents worth. But remember me when it is well with you. And please show loving commitment to me. And mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. Wow. Wow. Who is the one that was showing him loving commitment up until now? Who is the one that has been showing Joseph loving commitment? Who is the one that has been leading Joseph's life up until now? Do you really honestly want to tell me that Joseph needed to be able to be reminding the cupbearer that he needs to be able to remember Joseph? But you see, this is where Joseph goes into the flesh. And so you see, we can very at one minute just bring the most powerful message of the father. Just like Elijah takes on the prophets of Baal, slays 450 prophets of Baal and then another 400 prophets again. And it was like, I think, 850 prophets all in one go. And the next minute he's running away from uh, Jezebel because now he goes into the flesh. So he's okay to stand before the prophets of Baal and calls down fire from heaven and sees the mighty work of the father. But now he's going to run from Jezebel because he's going to fear. Do you see? And yes, this is Joseph now. And listen to how now he goes and he feels sorry for himself. For truly I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. And also I have done naught that they should put me into this dungeon. So understand. Now he's got to tell them his story. Because now he's feeling a little bit sorry for himself. Do you understand? So yeah, you see where Joseph goes a little bit into the flesh. And now he is going to be able to put his trust in his faith because, because he's giving the vision, because he's interpreting the, the dream to the cupbearer and now he knows that the cupbearer is going to stand before the Pharaoh and the cupbearer is going to be reinstated with the Pharaoh. He wants the, him to put in a good word to the Pharaoh for him in order that the Pharaoh may be able to release him. So where was his trust and his faith in the Father? Now, do you understand that this is how many times we do not allow the Father to have his full work in us because we interfere with his process? Just when we are about to receive the reward, just when the Father is about to do, now imagine, if he had maybe said nothing, the, understand, when the father does a miracle, you know what? That person at the appointed time is going to remember what he needs to remember. You don't need to remind that person because who's, who, who holds the hand, who holds the, the heart in the hand, in his hand? Father is the one who's in charge of the heart of every person. And by now, Joseph should know this. And this is the one place where Joseph stumbles. And the chief baker saw the interpretation was good. And he said to Yosef, I also was in my dream and saw three white baskets were on my head. And in the uppermost basket, all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. And Yosef answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Yet, within three days, Pharaoh is going to lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree. And the birds shall eat your flesh from you. And on the third day, Pharaoh's birthday, it came to be that he made a feast for all the servants and he lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and of the chief baker amongst his servants. And he restored the chief cupbearer to his post of cupbearer again. And he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker 
as Yosef had interpreted to them. And the chief cupbearer did not remember Yosef, but forgot him. So, there you see, the very thing that he asked him to do, the very thing that he asked him to say, please remember me when you come into the fullness. Remember me. <laughs> Yet at the end of the day, the very thing he asked of him, he did not do. Now there's something very interesting when you look at this. If we look at the prophetic behind this as well. Interesting how there's three days. Interesting where it talks about the one is going to be hung and the other one is going to be restored. The one that's got to do with the vine. Yeshua becomes the fruit of the vine for us. Yeshua lays down his life for us. He's the one who's going to be able to lay down his life for us. He's the one, the vine, being the cup. He drinks that cup of suffering. He drinks the cup of the suffering for us. Yet, after three days, he's going to be restored. He's going to resurrect. He's going to be restored into that heavenly place. Into that place where he's going to be seated with the Father. Where he is the one that is going to intercede on our behalf. And the other one shows how he is the one who's going to have to hang at the stake. So, the one is how he's going to be able to hang to hang at the stake. His body is going to be broken. The seed, the body is going to, the seed has to fall to the ground and die before it can produce a harvest. So the one is going to represent Yeshua going into the ground, going to be able to be hung at a stake where he was hanging at the stake three days that he had to be in the belly of the earth three days and his body is broken and he is in the belly of the earth for three days but the other one is the one where he is going to give his blood where he becomes then the cup he drank the cup of suffering for us so that after three days he can then be reinstated, seated at the right hand of the Father, being the one who's going to give us that wine for us to drink, the new wine, because he then comes to give us the new wine. And he's the one who becomes the one who's going to give us the wine that we need to drink the, of his kingdom. When we see him at the wedding of Cana, Remember, we went into de detail about the new wine, and it's not the, the wine as in terms of intoxicated wine. It's not wine that is fermented, but it's unfermented wine, the purest grape juice that Yeshua comes to be able to give. And that is why he sees a vineyard, and that, that is the grape juice, the purest grape juice. Yeshua's blood is going to be shed for us. And Interesting how the one was with the seed. The baker is the seed. And it's the bread. He's the baker. It's the bread. So Yoshua is the bread and he is the wine. He represents the bread and he represents the wine. The baker was the one that had, would have the bread. Because remember he had many things that he had baked on his head. And so it, Yeshua becomes the bread and he becomes the wine. And he fulfills this very, I'm giving you an interpretation of here that is other than from what was given for you to understand. Again, the third day, there is bread being spoken of. There is wine being spoken of. Yeshua becomes, the, the body gets broken and his blood is shed. And he's the new wine and he's the bread of life that has come for us on the third day that he's resurrected. So he's going to have to die and then he's going to be resurrected. Amen. And so we continue in chapter 41. We will continue in chapter 41. And so now we have seen that the chief, chief cupbearer has forgotten Yosef. 
And it came to be at the end of two years. So now understand, two years later. So how long can it take? Because of the work of our flesh. Because of the work of the, the children of Israel in their flesh, it took 40 years. Um, a, a journey that was supposed to take them 11 days took them 40 years. 40 years where it was supposed to have taken them a journey of 11 days because of their flesh, because of their griping, their moaning, and their complaining. Do you see, Joseph complained a little bit of here when he said, for truly I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and also I have done nothing. I've done naught. That they should put me into the dungeon. So he is complaining. And now he wants out. He's had his fair share here. So do you see, when we go into our flesh, it was like that, that message that I'd sent out where um, you don't know when your miracle is about to be. You don't know how many days you're going to be in the trial. And now just could be the next day Father is about to deliver you from the trial and now you go into your flesh and now you go and help him out and then you delay the process for how long? So it could have been that just after this, when the baker and the butler are going to, the baker and the cupbearer are going to be released, that they could be those. He could have remembered him and said, wow, there was this man in prison that has spoken about us. But no, no, no. This is not what has happened. Two years go by. The father could have given the fear of the dream straight afterwards, but he was going to teach Joseph a lesson and Joseph was going to sit for another two years so that Joseph would understand that only through the work and the hand of the father is there mighty deliverance. And this is what we must understand. It's not man that's going to come and deliver us out of our circumstance. It's not man that's going to come and um, make sure that when our timing of when we're supposed to come out of our trial is going to take place. It's not man that's going to take you out of your trial. It's not man that is going to bring your trial to an end or yourself. It's the father at his appointed time when he says, now it's time for you to come forth. You cannot birth yourself. Man births you. Uh, father births you at his appointed time. So there came to be at the end of two years' time that the Pharaoh had a dream and saw him standing by the river and saw seven cows coming up out of the river, beautiful looking and fat, and they fed amongst the, the reeds and saw seven other cows and they saw seven other cows on the bank of the river Uh, sorry, and they saw seven other cows coming up after them out of the river, ugly and lean of flesh, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly lean of flesh cows ate up the seven beautiful looking and fat cows. Then the Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamt a second dream, a second time. And saw seven heads of grain coming up on one stalk, plump and good. And saw seven lean heads scorched by the east wind coming up after them. And the seven lean heads swallowed the seven plump and complete heads. Then the Pharaoh woke and saw it was a dream. And it came to be in the morning that his spirit was moved. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Mitzrayim and all its wise men. And Pharaoh related to them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. So you see, even though there will be all these magicians and there will be all these sorcerers, but at the end of the day, the father is the only one who will really interpret dreams. And so we must understand that Father is the one who's in control 
of all these things. And that's why I say that, you know, many times there's many people, there's people that sometimes have a vision. I've heard before where people will have a vision or people will have a dream. And then they go and they give the interpretation of the dream. But then they say to the people, look, you know what, but let the Father reveal to you. And I have sat down and sometimes listened to the interpretation of the dream and what they are speaking is not at all what is being interpreted. What they are interpreting is not at all what's coming from the Father. Because I think that sometimes we just go into the flesh. And that is why we need to seek the Father for the Father to be able to give the interpretation for us to truly understand what he's saying. Because Joseph understood the interpretation comes from the Father. And so, you know, many times I think people misinterpret them because they don't want to give the evil report. <laughs> they only want to give the good. Now understand, Joseph had a good report to give to the one. But Joseph had a bad report to give to the other. And how many times we are not willing to speak the bad report? So we might see a tsunami coming. We might see these big things of destruction. But yet we will turn it around and say, oh no, it's a tsunami of healing or a tsunami of uh, whatever. You know, normally if you're going to see a tsunami coming, uh, generally it's not a good thing. But then people want to bring a good thing out of it. And I think many times people will bring the wrong interpretation because they don't want to speak the, the, the bad. But Joseph didn't have a problem in speaking the truth. And this is what we must understand. And this is the revelation that the Father wants to give us today. The Father doesn't just want us to always just speak the positive thing. Because we must understand, we also have to speak that which is what he shows. And he doesn't always show the good thing. He also shows the destruction. So as much as he shows you the encouraging side, he shows you the destruction side. And this is what is being relayed over here. He's seeing seven fat cows, then he's seeing seven lean cows, and now the lean cows are eating the fat cows, and he's seeing seven uh, lean um seven fat, uh, uh, um, you know, heads of, of, uh, that he's seen, of grain, and then seven, seven lean ones. And he's seen good and he's seen bad. Now imagine if Joseph just came and just gave him the good thing. That's not going to help anybody. And you see, this is what is going on in the prophetic in this day and age. The prophetic in what is going on at the moment. Nobody wants to bring a word of warning. Nobody wants to bring a word of rebuke. Everybody just wants to bring of how he's going to prosper us and how he's going to bless us and how he's going to, you know, we're all just going to be blessed and prosperous. Man, if I listen to some of the prophetic words that are out there, I stand back and I say, you've got to be for real. Really? Really? You've got to be joking. Why? Because we have become tainted. Tainted in the prophetic. Tainted in their own dreams and in their own visions because they become tainted by having to give the encouraging word to people because it comes back to what people are going to be able to say on their group and they just they are wanting to be able to please the people. Or it's about the money in the pocket. That we want to speak all the nice things. And then the ones that are trying to speak truth, they just get branded as, um, <laughs> these people are, are, are just doom and gloom. They just bring a message of doom and gloom. It was like a message that I heard yesterday, where this woman is talking about an analogy of the Titanic. And how she was explaining and she says, you see, a lot of warnings came. But each person at a different level of the warning, just like sort of like silenced out the warning and nobody wanted to be able to receive the warnings. So the warnings came through different ways, but they didn't want to receive the warnings because nobody really wanted to hear 
that there was going to be anything wrong with this Titanic, that nothing could sink it. But that Titanic sank with how many people on it. And yet, the warnings were there. The warnings were given. The warnings was coming. But they didn't give the warnings. Why? Because they didn't want to be able to upset the apple cart of these prosperous people that were on the ship, that were told that nothing could sink it. And this is what we must understand where we are today. You see, nobody wants to speak anything negative. We just want to hear all the good thing. We don't want to hear any bad thing. And so, we continue and it says, And it came to be in the morning that his spirit was moved, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Mitzrayim and all its wise men, and the Pharaoh related to them his dream. But there was no one who could interpret them for the Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my crimes this day. Now you imagine, only now the cupbearer remembers that he didn't do what he should have done. When Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in confinement in the house of the captain of the god, both me and the chief baker, each one of us dreamt a dream in one night. And he and I, each of us dreamt according to the interpretation of his own dream. And there was with us a Hebrew youth a servant of the captain of the guard, and we related to him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream, and it came to be as he interpreted for us, so it came to be. He restored to me, he restored to me to my office, and he hanged and he hanged him. Then the Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Yosef, and they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon, and he shaved and changed his garments and came to the Pharaoh. So you see, the Father will clean you up. Now, I need you to understand something today. Father has been busy with your life, and even though the devil tries to destroy your reputation, you see, Joseph's reputation had been destroyed. He had the accusations come against him. And many accusations of many people that had spoken up against him. But at the appointed time, Father was going to raise him up and have his reputation reinstated. And he was going to do what the Father had created him to, to do and become who the Father created him to become because of his obedience to the Father. So you see, as long as you continue to be obedient to the Father, even in the light of your affliction, even in the process of where you're going through your hardships and your trials and you stay faithful to the Father, understand something. At the appointed time, they will remember you. They will remember the word that came out of your mouth. They will remember that you spoke a word in season. They will remember that which you have done. They will remember who you are. So even though um, you look like you are forgotten and you look like the world has forgotten you and you look like you are in confinement and nobody will remember anything about you but understand something. Abba Yahuwah knows your name. Abba Yahuwah knows your name and he will clean you up and he will put a new garment on you and it's time for you to raise up into the fullness of that which he has ordained for you. And this is what we must remember. Don't look at where you are right now. Don't look at the place that you might be right now in the Murray clay because at the appointed time, he will take you out of the muddy clay. He will put your feet solid on the rock. And you will do what you were created to do. Because the word that he has spoken over your life will not return void. It will not return void. But it shall surely accomplish that which he has already spoken it to accomplish.
And at the appointed time, he will bring the people that's needing to come across your path. He will have orchestrated everything that needed to have been done so that at the appointed time, he will raise you up. You don't need to promote yourself. You don't need to try and make sure that everybody sees you or knows you or hears, or hears you. At the appointed time, he will put you in the strategic place of where you need to be and he will use you for you to do what you need to do. So at the end of the day, you know what? All we need to do is be faithful to what the Father tells us to do. Day by day, walk with him. Do what he's created you to do. Speak as he tells you to speak. Do what he tells you to do. I mean, yeah, was this, you know, do you think it was easy for Joseph now to be, he's just told the baker, the butler to remember him. He's just told the cupbearer, remember me. Remember me. But now the baker is giving him the, the, the word, that is a word where his head is going to be taken off. But he wasn't shy and he wasn't scared to tell him the truth. He might have decided, well, this is not a very good word. So let me rather just keep quiet because, oh my goodness, I can't bring this kind of a word. No, no, no. He made sure that he brought the interpretation of the word exactly what the Father gave. So at the end of the day, all the Father requires of us, walk in obedience. Walk set apart unto him. It doesn't matter who has spoken up against you. It doesn't matter who's persecuted you. It doesn't matter who's put you in what pit. It doesn't matter who's accused you. It doesn't matter where you find yourself in some kind of dungeon. No one thing. At the appointed time, Father will reinstate you. Father will lift you up. Father will be able to cleanse you. Father will put a new garment on you like the prodigal son. Put a ring on your finger put a new garment on you, give you the sandals, kill the fatted calf for you, and then tell you, go now and bring in my people. Because he's the one who will raise you up at his appointed time. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you, Father. Oh, my Father, I thank you for these revelations that you give us through your word, my Father. For us to understand that each one of us has to go through our difficult paths as we walk with you, just to be obedient to you. And to be obedient to you many times comes with accusations, comes with persecution, comes with people turning against us, comes with people speaking up against us just because we want to be obedient to what you're telling us to do. But at the, in the long run, if we are just obedient to do what you tell us to do, you are looking for a willing and an obedient servant. And when we are willing and when we are obedient, at the appointed time, you are the one that will raise us up. And even those that accused us, and even those that spoke up against us, the same as when it's going to be now, as Joseph is going to be, as the right hand man of the Pharaoh. Can you imagine Potiphar? When Potiphar's going to see this man being reinstated. So Father, we must never ever allow ourselves to sit in that shame because you know how to reinstate your name when the time is right. And so even though man will speak up against us and man will want to discredit your name because that is what the devil wants to do. The devil is always trying to destroy the testimony of your name. But at the appointed time, you will turn that thing that the enemy meant for bad, you will turn it for good because of the one who loves you. You work all things together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose because you are the one that is going to bring about your purpose and your plan and you will turn our situations around for good from that which the enemy meant for bad. And many are going to stand back and say, oh, wow, look and see, Father was with them all along even when it looked like they were being led by Hasatan.
in the accusation of what Hasatan was bringing against them in their lives, just like Joseph, to discredit him, to remove the testimony of what he carried for you as a man of Yahuwah. But at the appointed time, you were going to reinstate him. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I just thank you because you are a good Yah. And because even though the enemy wants to kick us when we're down, you will come at the appointed time because all things are in your hand and you turn the situations around so that at the end of the day, you are going to be glorified. <laughs> Just like with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in that time, those three young Hebrew men, eunuchs, even them, everybody when they saw them being thrown in that furnace thought, well, so much for these Hebrew men, these young Hebrew men that were not willing to bow to any other God and only to their Yahuwah. But in the midst of that fire, you showed yourself strong as the fourth person in the fire that even Nebuchadnezzar stood back and said, Wow, look, the son of Yahuwah is with them in the midst of the fire. And they came out of there not even smelling of burnt. And that is what you do. We will come out of our trials not even being smelling of the stench of what the devil tried to put on us. And that's why even Joseph was clean shaven, was put on new robes so that he smelt like your new creation. And so I thank you, Father, that you are raising up a new creation right now that's going to smell and look like you. They will carry your fragrance wherever they go because they are ambassadors for you and this is what you're wanting to do in this time and so I thank you for this word Father I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name Amen